Welcome to Fabulous Feasts. I'm Dr. Donald DeFabio and this is my kitchen. Fabulous Feasts is all about empowerment. Empowering you to make good food choices. Food is a drug. Hippocrates said it. Let medicine be thy food and let food be thy medicine. The shows are about tasty recipes, recipes that are going to be simple to prepare with ingredients you can find anywhere that are going to create new flavor memories. By creating new flavor memories, you can start to embrace those foods that are going to help you get your life back if you're not feeling well. Foods that are going to help reduce inflammation. Foods that are going to help boost immunity. Foods that are going to help you stay well if your health's in good shape. And foods that are going to help you live with more vitality. They're going to enable you to live longer and reduce your genetic expression for disease. That's what Fabulous Feast is all about. Today's show is going to be zucchini stew, or we'll call it a squash stew, and it's going to have some protein in it. And we're going to pair that with some seeds, quinoa and wild rice. And then we're also going to talk about our meal prep with that dish, as well as a really nice tri salad that doesn't involve radicchio or arugula. So you got to get those three colors in your salads. Let's see how we do it. So let's start out with our zucchini stew. Our zucchini stew is not going to be vegetarian. We want to get some protein. What protein did we choose? We chose veal. So we're going to use some veal stew meat. So let's turn the fire on because we want the fire we want the fire started. Some veal stew meat, salt and pepper. Just toss the salt and pepper around your veal stew meat while your pan's getting hot. Then we're going to add a little bit of olive oil into the pan because the veal is very lean. There is less fat in veal than in mature beef, but it is still red meat, so we're just using a little bit. This is just over a half a pound of veal stew meat, and it's chopped up into small pieces, pieces that are three quarters of an inch cubes. Now, if you can't get veal stew meat, you can just buy a piece of veal shoulder and trim it down yourself. One of the good reasons to buy the veal shoulder yourself is that you can really trim away all the fat. You can trim away all the, it's called fascia, that white shiny material uh, that's within the muscle. And fascia is that material that not only runs in between muscles, but it also, it muscles attached to it. In fact, in humans, 30% of your muscles attach directly to fascia, that white membrane that goes in and out of the muscles because muscles attach to the fascia and keeping your muscles healthy, keeping your fascia healthy is very, very important. So stretching, dynamic warm up, things like that are important. Doing soft tissue work with a foam roller, a stick, getting deep soft tissue work like we do in the office with our thumbs and the Graston instruments, very important for keeping your fascia healthy. Because again, 30% of muscles attach to fascia. So we need to keep that whole system, the myofascial system balanced. And all the soft tissue procedures we do in the office are part of that. The big uh, radial pulse wave therapy, the cold level laser therapy that we do. Again, Graston, pin and stretch, active release. Uh, our exercises, the foam roller, the vibration machines. It's all to keep your fascia healthy, which helps your muscles stay healthy, which helps you move better. So this has got it brown. So this is gonna cook for a few minutes. While that's cooking, we're gonna get our zucchini prepped. Our zucchini is gonna be one zucchini cut in quarters, on half, in little half moons rather, quarter of an inch thick. We have one yellow squash cut approximately the same size. 
We have one median onion uh, sliced in little wedges. And we have two cloves of garlic. That's gonna be the base of our zucchini stew. And the veal is just gonna be a little bit of a special treat to get some protein. However, today's show we're also gonna be using quinoa and, brown, um, and wild rice not only for a carbohydrate source, but for a protein source, because they're both complete proteins. That's right. Quinoa and wild rice have all the essential uh, amino acids you need to keep your muscles healthy. So you need amino acids, you need protein to build muscle, to maintain muscle. If you find your muscles are getting uh, uh, more, uh, uh, flaccid, they're losing some of their tone. If you find you're getting older and you're not maintaining your muscle mass, even though you're exercising, maybe you need more protein and you specifically need those essential amino acids. So what are other relationships between quinoa and wild rice? Well, the biggest thing you have to know is that quinoa, all right, wild rice, these are both uncooked. Both are seeds. That's right, they're seeds. Don't get confused when you see the terms quinoa as a grain substitute or comparing it to other grains. Quinoa has been found to be higher in nutrient value. Or wild rice, comparing it to other grains. They're not grains. They're not grains. You can use them as a grain substitute, but they're not grains. Don't get confused. Let's check the meat. Not browned off, got a ways to go. So brown rice and quinoa aren't grains. They're seeds. However, they are carbohydrate dense. There's a lot of carbohydrates in there. A serving of quinoa, you're only gonna get eight grams of protein and it's uh, approximately the same as serving a wild rice. So you're not gonna get a lot of protein. You know, the average person, 150 pound person who's moderately active, may need 50 to 70 grams of protein a day. That's a lot of quinoa, that's a lot of rice. The good news is, they both have low glycemic index. What does that mean? That means it doesn't shoot your blood sugar up really high. So for my patients that understand the anti-inflammatory diet, they realize there's two things that drive inflammation. One is how much your blood sugar spikes after a meal and how long it stays elevated. The second is your ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3 fatty acids keep inflammation down. Omega-6 fatty acids keep inflammation up. Omega-6 fatty acids are found in grains. Omega-3 fatty acids are found in vegetation. What's Fabulous Feasts all about? It's about five to seven servings of vegetables a day. It's about low glycemic foods like quinoa, like wild rice. And it's about maintaining a good protein level throughout the day when you eat. Protein size is about the serving size. Serving size is about the size of your fist. And that'll get you what you need to get through the day. How's our meat doing? It's not ready yet. I can tell. Yep, not ready. So let's take a little break while this browns. Let's take a look at the veal. Nice. I leave the cover on the veal in the beginning. It, it helps it break down a little bit more. But now that all the liquid's out, let it brown. While it's browning, keep the cover. You're going to need it. While it's browning, add your two cloves of crushed garlic and your one median onion. Stir that around. Wait till the onion starts to sweat a little bit. A pinch of salt. Just a pinch, because we'll be adding a little bit more later. Again, the, the, if you're using veal shoulder, it has a tendency to be a little 
a little tough deal shoulder so keeping it covered helps keep that moisture in because that'll help break it down. The other thing that's going to help break it down is the next thing we add is our tomatoes. Chopped tomatoes, if you're using plum tomatoes, just use the plum tomatoes and not all the juice that comes with it. Um, this is about uh, four or five ounces of chopped tomatoes. Put it right in there, cover that baby up, all right? Heat should be medium to medium high. Just keep an eye on the fluid level because we want a little fluid in here, but we don't want it swimming because we're going to add fluid with the zucchini. It's going to throw off fluid as well as the summer squash is going to throw off fluid. So uh, while that cooks, we can talk a little bit more about our wild rice and our quinoa. Uh, quinoa and wild rice also have similarities in preparation. Rinse them first, wash them, all right? Uh, there's something called phytates on quinoa, uh, which some people don't react well to at all. And the phytates block the absorption of the great minerals in quinoa, the magnesium, the potassium, the manganese, those are all in quinoa. By the way, quinoa is indigenous Peru, that's a little fun fact for you. Uh, so you have to rinse it first. But it's a seed, hmm. That means seeds like grow into plants. So you can sprout quinoa. If you take any seed, alfalfa, mung bean, uh, quinoa, any bean actually, you can sprout them. And once they sprout and they start to have chlorophyll in color, wheatgrass, it changes the whole nutrient value. It becomes a live food. So sprouting your beans, sprouting your seeds, very, very uh, beneficial, lots of health benefits. It ramps up the antioxidant level significantly. Let's check the meat. Mm, perfect, meaning there's lots of juice in there and it's just cooking down. Let it go. That's going to take about eight minutes like that. The other thing about quinoa you need to know, it's high in oxalates. Now anybody who's had oxalate kidney stones know they have to stay away from oxalates. So some people who are at risk for kidney stones don't eat quinoa, uh, oxalate stones. Calcium stones, you can have quinoa. So, but again, people with kidney stones understand that. Your wild rice has to be inspected before you eat it or cook it. Um, why? Because you can get a fungus on it and you'll see the fungus, it's like a purplish uh, uh, type of fungus, a rose colored, and it produces a toxin called uh, ergo, um, E-R-G-O-T. So make sure your wild rice um, is uh, not changing color, it should be that color. Now, wild rice and quinoa both boil them down, boil up some water and cook them. The ratio is about two to one water to quinoa. The ratio is going to be three to one water to wild rice. Wild rice is very woody. It's a very strong flavor, has lots of antioxidants. So it's healthy, but you're only going to eat so much of it. Quinoa is more neutral. Uh, it has a nutty flavor. And again, you can sprout both of them if you want. Soaking them also helps to release some of their natural enzymes, especially the chemo, to bring out more nutrients. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to pair them together with our stew, and boy, that's going to be perfect. So as this cooks a little bit, it still has nice fluid in it. The tomatoes are starting to break down. The... Get out! Oh, he doesn't want to go! The... Onions are breaking down. Now we're going to add the zucchini. And a little bit more salt, a little bit of pepper, and some oregano. About a tea half teaspoon of oregano. Pinch of black pepper. Pinch of salt. This should start throwing off more water, but you need to keep an eye on it. If it starts to get dry, your options are to add a little bit of water or just a touch of white wine is a nice way to give it a little bit of texture, fluid. Um, 
You can even add a little bit of red wine if that's around, but just a little bit, one or two tablespoons to keep the fluid in there. Cover it, lower the heat a little bit, let those vegetables sweat. Leave it for stirring occasionally, 10 minutes. Now, we have veal in here, there's some fat, but otherwise there's not a lot of fat in this dish. We're gonna pair it with a salad, a tricolory salad, more vegetables. Why? Because this is going to be a nutrient-dense, calorically low uh, meal that is also going to give you uh, good um, fiber and energy. Because we want to remind you, people that are working out and exercising that want to get ready for a wash, a washboard abs, they're made right here. Abs are made in the kitchen, that's right. You don't get to look like one of those fitness models by just doing lots of sit-ups. In fact, sit-ups are really bad for your back. Abs are made in the kitchen. You have to eat right. You have to eat nutrient-dense foods. You have to eat good fats, and you have to eat lean protein. So that's our tip for today, but about core stability, here's a little video we made in the office I want you to watch for core stability, and that'll teach you how to get nice and strong, protect your back, and then eat like this and you will see those six pack abs. Check out this short video in the office. Let's pump up your core. That's right, let's pump up your core. Let's give you strength in your core so it stabilizes your lower back so that you don't have recurrent back pain. How do you do that? Well, there's a couple of simple exercises I'm gonna show you today. We have all of the different exercises in our YouTube playlist, so you can watch those as well. But even better, just ask us. We'll set you up on the right exercises for your body because everybody is different. However, let's look at what you don't want to do if you're having back pain. You don't want to do hanging leg raises at the gym. You don't want to do Superman exercises. You don't want to do sit-ups that are straight-legged sit-ups or bent-legged sit-ups where you come all the way up. Those are great for your washboard abs, but guess what? Washboard abs do not give you core stability. So let's stay away from those exercises. However, what do you want to do? Well, you need to engage all through here those deep muscles. What's the first one? The first one is just some bridges. In this position, pinch your butt, tighten your abs, and you bridge up. Real tight in the glutes. They got to be rock hard. This is what we call my first exercise to Dr. D's Buns of Steel program. Yeah, all right, and drop it down. When that gets easy, you can straighten one leg out and you can do bridges with one leg and down. But bridges, making sure you're engaging the abs and pitching the butt, first exercise. Second exercise, lie on that side. It's just a side plank. We'll do it from the knees right now where you're nice and good alignment and you prop up. Hold that for 10 seconds. Do a series of 10. If that's good, then you can start to learn to do them with the legs straight. Then you can put one leg in the air. Watch our side plank playlist series for all the variations. But the bottom line is bridges get the back, side planks get the side. But that's not your whole core, is it? No, we have to do the front two. So some basic front planks. Getting to a front plank position, Engage the glute, engage the core, drop the chest a little bit. Engage the core and then come up like an elevator. Hold that for about 10 seconds. If you do this exercise correctly, you can't hold it for 10 minutes. You cannot win the plank uh, contest at the gym if you do it by engaging your deep core stabilizers. And that's the way to do it and relax. And that last thing I said is huge. You have to do these exercises right. Yes, you can watch my videos on my playlist. Yes, you can get exercises anywhere virtually now. But are, number one, are you doing the right exercises for you? Number two, is your technique appropriate to get to your health goals? That's what we bring to the table. So discuss your exercises with us. Let us know what your goals are, and then we'll make sure you're doing the right exercises for your condition, for your body, the right amount, the right intensity, the right frequency, and the right duration. It's been a great day to talk core stability and rehab, but remember, abs are made in the kitchen. Let's go back there right now. 
The zucchini is just about done. I don't like to cook it to death. I like it with a little bit of texture. Keeping an eye on it, make sure it doesn't lose all of its water and volume. If it does, you can start to turn the heat down a little bit. While that finishes, let's look at our salad. Our salad is going to be a tricolory salad, starting with romaine lettuce. You don't have to be fancy with your salads, but they do need a minimum of three colors. Now, a tricolory salad is traditionally arugula, radicchio, and endive, but today we're going to use some romaine lettuce. I am going to throw a little endive in there, so there's another color of the tricolore, and just break the leaves up. If you can want to be a little fancy, you can chiffonade them in there as well. It doesn't make a difference, okay? Um, get the endive, and then guess what? Orange, carrots, simple shredded carrots. Get those carotenoids, good for your eye health. Hey, another fun fact, bilberry. Bilberry, bilberry jam, it's a, it's a berry, bilberry. Um, they found out in World War II, there was a town in England where, you know, in England they shut the lights out at night because they were getting bombed by the uh, Germans. And all the towns had their lights out. And there was a town in England where they had really found out all the, the men going into the service had really good natural night vision. They ate lots of bilberry jam there. And that's how they found out bilberry is really good for your eyes. So, a little fun fact. So, there's your tray calori salad. I'm going to add just a touch of uh, oregano to it to add its pursed up a little bit. Some extra virgin olive oil because I want the extra oxidants, the phytocannabinoids. Whoa, that was balsamic vinegar, which I'm going to put on it too. I prefer to add the oil first because the oil kind of coats the vegetables so they don't get, uh, they, they stay crisper. All right. Uh, and my EVO, excuse my back. So my extra virgin olive oil, because it's higher in antioxidants. And there's the salad, extra virgin olive oil and a tad of salt, a tad of fresh pepper and balsamic vinegar. And a quick toss. And then we better take a look at that zucchini. It's getting away. Great. Quick toss on that. Let's take a look at the zucchini. Ah, perfect. See the fluid's still there and the zucchini is not falling apart. Let's shut that off. Let that set for a second. While I put that over there, a little salad that tried to get away can go over here. But guess what? On my salad, if I wanted it, add a little extra treat. I'm going to just take a little piece of shaving of, come on now, a little shaving of Parmesan cheese. Just like that, okay? Production tip, foodie tip, to get those shavings like that of the Parmesan cheese or any cheese, just take a vegetable peeler and just slide it right down your cheese. And there you go. That's how they get those really nice shavings of Parmesan cheese in the restaurant. So that's your, your, your food tip. So let's plate. This is going to take a bowl. Now, I like my wild rice cooked so it gets fluffy, but some people like it al dente, your call. This takes long to cook. This takes about an hour. Quinoa takes about 15 minutes. So when I cook wild rice, I'll cook the whole box, and it's expensive. I'll cook the whole box, take out what I need, and I put the rest in the freezer. So when I want it, I just have to take it out and warm it up. So that's another tip for you. I like mine fluffy. Some people like it crunchy. We're going to use equal parts of wild rice and our quinoa, which only takes about 15 minutes to cook. And I like to mix them up a little bit, okay? I mix them up a little bit. Equal parts. And that's going to be, I'm going to add a little more. I'm 
That's going to be the bed for our stew. Wow. I wish you could smell that. That is, man, heaven on earth. Heaven on earth. This is Italian soul food, baby. And you put it right over. And you put it right over, just like that, okay? You're getting lean meat. You're getting vegetables and a touch of fresh parsley. I can put the rest right in here for color and for nutrition, the chlorophyll. So this is going to be our dinner. You want to spruce it up because you have family coming over or friends coming over. Dress it real nicely with some Italian parsley, which has more flavor than the white, than the curly parsley. Your salad. Another bowl for that. We'll just put those right here. Plate up your salad. And then your chiffonade or parmesan goes on the top. Get those carotenoids in, and there we go. Touch of that. Now, you know I like to give you a meal prep. What are we going to do with meal prep? This is probably the easiest meal prep of all. It's this. Get a container, scoop of quinoa, scoop of two scoops of wild rice, but that combination works really well. In here. And that's your meal prep. All you need now is a fork. If you want to get fancy, you can always add a little Parmesan cheese. Fabulous feasts. It's about eating right. It's about making good food choices. It's about trying some different foods. And it's about eating a lot of what you can eat. Vegetables, fruits, lean meat, seeds. I'm Dr. Donald DeFabio. Thanks for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you on the next show. Mm -hmm.